Hi, Hi we're, we're the, the Rush, Rush Tribute Project, Project, and you're listening to Two Guys Talking Rush. Two guys, two guys are talking. Rush two, 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 two guys, two guys are talking. Rush two, two guys are talking. Rush two, two guys, two guys are talking. Rush, 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 two guys. And now, get ready for the Two Guys Talking Rush podcast with your hosts, John Kane and Dan Buxman. What's your most requested song? Requested song? <laughs> it's probably Working Man. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. We actually, so we, we had this happen. We, we play it. It was like the end of our show for Freebird, a actually. couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we finally said, okay, let's not do the encore. Let's not do Workman for an encore. And we did some, I think we did like La Villa or something like that, right? So we did La Villa Stranciato as an encore. And then one of the comments was, how come you didn't play Working Man? I was like, oh, all right. Wow. Uh, I guess we're doing Working Man next time. Um, but yeah, you know, so honestly, we, I think we've all, every show, we've played a core group of songs. But the thing is, Rush fans all want to hear different eras, right? Just like you were alluding to before. And so we actually put out a poll at one point because we do album shows sometimes. Like um, we'll play a whole album back back. We just did the um, Moving Pictures album on the anniversary of the of the release. We've yeah. done oh wow, done a lot. We've done Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, like Signals, Grace Under Pressure, under pressure. Yeah. and Power Windows. And, and Power Windows, <laughs> right? Um, but so we actually asked them, "What albums would you like to hear?" If we were to cover albums, and that got that was how we ended up working through our list of songs or of albums was was getting feedback but we don't really get song requests other than people screaming them out in the middle of a show which right doesn't help because we've already <laughs> the show. oh that's funny uh, so uh, with with regard to i mean obviously the pandemic has squashed a lot of uh uh touring and, and gig dates for for bands um have you made it out to the east coast the new england area ever uh, that's where dan and i are so i'm being a little uh you know biased so, we did one private show out there. Two. Two, well, yeah, two, one weekend private shows. But no, we have not done any, any public shows out there for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you have a couple of good bands out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lotus Land is out there, right? And so um, we'd be essentially directly competing with stuff they already do. And so they're generally places aren't going to bring us in if they already have a good local app, right? Um, also, it's just a financial thing. Like we, ha we right. have to travel far enough. So the show has to be big enough and it has to be worth it to both us and to the venue. Yeah. So, no. We're, we're also we're i don't know how we compare to other bands but it's like we've got well well two of the three of us have have uh have day jobs and um so like the one what was sean you know mentioning the the two shows we did was in uh new york um we were hired it was a private party two private parties um we drove to new york played two shows and drove home so it wasn't wow. like it wasn't like we were on a, um, a, a tour. tour or anything like that. Yeah. It was like, okay, hey, let's let's do this. Yeah. Um, in fact, just to save costs, I I drove. Yeah, <laughs> so I probably drove the way home. I think it was eighteen hours straight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's a long, long yeah, drive. And, yeah, yeah. And just when you think you're close to home, and then you got to get around Chicago. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but but yeah. but yeah, I mean, in in Texas, you know, the we did three Texas shows uh, last year. Those were the only shows on that trip. Yeah, it was a we drove day. to Texas, played yeah. three shows, and drove home. Yeah, and we'll be like we'll be going to Georgia um, this fall, assuming everything works out. Oh wow! Um, cool. So yeah, I mean we'll 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 go places as long as it works out, as long as the yes, able to go. it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and conversations with Lotus Land. Uh, I remember uh, that that was it was important for them to know that the place they were going to play was going to be sufficiently sized you know it needs to be a a good enough sprawling area to, and you know wh why play this music in this tiny little right. club it's almost nearly impossible so it needs to be a a big enough and sufficient space and uh and all that yeah, uh, well, we gotta get his drum set on there somehow so we can't have yeah. 
kind of a place. Yeah, and it's not just Lotus Land. I mean, there are several other uh, Rush uh, tribute acts out there. Uh, are there any in particular that you you like, uh, or that you do you do you keep up on the trends of this? Because it seems like uh, there are a lot of now post Neil passing and Rush sort of uh, uh, not around uh, anymore um, uh, as a as a as an act that there are more bands coming out or musicians coming out playing the music of Rush. Um, I guess maybe there's a natural occurrence, right? Celebrating this incredible band. But uh, do, you, do you guys pay attention to that stuff or you just kind of focus on your own or what? That's, that's a good question. So honestly, um, like Bill was saying, because we both have day jobs and then we do this, uh, it doesn't leave a lot of time <laughs> for a lot of other right. people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We're aware, we're certainly aware of the other, of the other, um, I don't, want, I don't want to use the term good bands. You know what I yeah. mean? Like professional. Yeah. Professional level. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And they're fun to listen to. And like the, um, the, the tribute album that they put together, the Rush Fest, Steve, Scott Steve, Steve, yeah, yep. Steve yes. yep. um, you know, that was, I, I love listening to that. That's in my, that's yeah. on my, my iTunes, right? It's really good. It, it is. It is. Some really good covers and some really good, like different takes on, on this material. Yeah. I, I, I get a kick out of it. And like, uh, Animation has been a rush mm -hmm. tribute around this area. They're based out of Chicago. They've, they've been doing this. They've been doing it forever, forever. Yeah. And um, over the years, it's like I, I had first seen them actually uh, play on a side stage right before a rush show mm -hmm. at uh, at Summerfest in Milwaukee. And I was like, wow, you know. And um, and like I never in my mind thought this was even something that could be pulled off until I saw them, you know, a number of years ago do this and I don't know, yeah. wow, you know, and, but, uh, and, you know, so I, I'll, I'll go, you know, I'll go see them when they come up here, they come to Milwaukee. Sometimes we, we go down in their space and mm -hmm. they've seen us, uh, you know, and we, and we keep in touch. So that's cool. Uh, there, there are, there are a lot of Rush tribute bands and I think, I think there's, yeah. there's a lot of mutual respect. We know we're covering, um, covering a band that's really difficult to cover, and uh, yeah. we kind of all have all, all have our own way of doing it. I can't and believe how many Rush tributes there are in the world. Yeah, right. So many different countries. That it's true. Yes. Well, I mean, in a, in a way, it's not that surprising, you know, because they're they're really a musicians' band in a lot of ways, right. and yeah. so a lot of the people who hear them and listen to them and want to emulate them are you have to be a pretty advanced musician to be able to play that stuff. So that's a little, that's actually not that surprising to me that uh, rush would have a lot of tribute acts because they just generate a lot of musicians. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that we've been doing this show where, you know, it's been like, yeah, you know, and I heard all the world's a stage and that's how I became a bass player or I heard this and that's how I became a drummer. It just, it makes people want to explore an instrument so that's not surprising to me i always get a kick out of like seeing like five or six dudes on stage trying to cover like trying yeah. to cover the and like if you can't get it right with six five yeah. or six like stop you know that's as a fan uh that's where i'm like all right i'm done i'm always impressed by the three that really because you know they're really trying to get the instrumentation the dance uh right that sort of choreography yeah. of of uh, instruments on stage correct were you going to say something one of you i'm sorry well, just just real quick and yeah. uh, you know following following rush and really learning to play uh, for me learning to play guitar with rush as one of those really heavily heavy influences it set the bar so high right that um it made <laughs> in a lot of ways it made me dislike a lot of other music because it was like oh it's like the, the three-part <laughs> song, you know, and, uh, you know, and, you know, people always, always say, you know, I will, we'll hear people say all the time, like, oh, you, you guys, do you write your own music? And like, no, I'm, and it's like, that's, <laughs> yeah. um, it's like the, the, the complexity. It's like, that's, that's just something that. Ever I, think about coming I up with have the mental capability of doing, doing that. I can't even believe some of the stuff that they wrote. And, well, I was going to ask you guys, do you ever think of just kind of creating your own, music like original music out of this sort of uh union that you formed here so okay so first of all we haven't we haven't actually talked about that so i'm not going to speak to that <laughs> <laughs> but just just piggybacking on what you guys were saying um if, if you look at any other type of music no one ever expects a, a violin player to write a concerto no one ever expects the um the french horn player to be the to be the the front lead person in an orchestra right. 
You know what I mean? It's like, there are people that play and that get really, really good at playing their instruments. And there's never any expectation that they're also the singer songwriter or whatever, right? right? But as soon as you get to something like this, now everyone's like, why aren't you doing your own stuff? Well, because that's not us, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not, first of all, we're not Rush. Second of all, our, some of us are very good at writing songs. Some of us are very good at playing songs. Some people are really good at doing both. Those are the superstars that everybody sees. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, we're players. What we do is yeah. play. That doesn't mean we can't write or have sure. never written, but that's just not, that's not what we do. Well, that's, that's interesting what you said too. I didn't really think about it that way, but like if you go to see an orchestra, you're not sitting there with this expectation that now they're going to bust out their own thing that they wrote. Right. And you don't sit there and go like, oh, these people are chumps. They don't even write their own stuff. All they play is Mozart. <laughs> it just, it does. I, I didn't really think of it that way until you mentioned it. Yeah. That's funny. Um, so you guys are going to play some music for us today. And um, we're really excited what? about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one told me that. <laughs> what? <laughs> just walk off set. Um, but uh, before before you do that, uh, a couple more questions. One is we, we always ask uh, our, our guests uh, this. If each of you could give us your top five Rush albums. Hard thing to do. But if you could put them in some sort of order, what are your top five? Live albums are allowed. Are allowed. Are, yes. No one ever picks them, but they're allowed. Oh, he's got a cheat sheet. This is great. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> hey, you, you came prepared. I, appre I appreciate that. People are, uh, did you know we were going to ask you that? So, yeah, we did. And I purposely told them not to tell me what they said. So just... Dan, we're becoming uh, known for uh, the. I can't do five, I can do six. Oh, in any particular order. Wait, that's oh, cheating. Dis disclaimer, disclaimer. Why, why six? Why six? First, why six? Uh, I can't leave that extra one out. Yeah, they're like they're like your they're like your children. You know, it's like it's a Sophie's choice to leave one of them off. So. Right. Farewell to Kings, Power Windows, Signals, Grace Under Pressure, and Moving Pictures. Nice. Yeah. What was the one that you couldn't leave out? What was number six? <laughs> moving Pictures. Oh. oh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, want this list? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, the two obvious ones are, are going to be permanent waves and um, in moving pictures. So those will be two of them for sure. Hemispheres, just a, just a such an influence to me for for playing guitar. And like I, I remember, um, and I don't know if you want a story behind it. I'll try to be brief. Of course. But I actually um, a good friend of mine was a big Rush nut was teaching, teaching me, he was also a guitar player and uh, was teaching me how to play Hemispheres, yet his LP, his actual vinyl, he lent it to a friend and then his friend like lost it or destroyed it or something. So we had nothing to go off of other than his memory. So I actually was learning how to play the song Hemispheres before I had ever heard it. So then Whoa. the first time I ever heard it, we were like, wow, I was really bad, you know? <laughs> but, but just, the genius of that album just absolutely hooked me. You know, we talk about you know, a lot of albums you have to listen to two or three times or more to get into. That was one of those that clicked immediately. And I just loved it from the start and still do. So that's def definitely my number three. And I might actually put that as my favorite. Um, for a dark horse, I'm going to say Caress of Steel. Nice. Um, there you go. And if I had to throw another one out there, probably Signals. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good selection. Yeah, I have a hard time uh, criticizing. They're all good songs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in in I guess not a real order. So some I'm going to agree with them on a couple. First of all, Hemispheres is certainly in my top five. That to me is the turning the corner for them. That is when they really learned how to not only not only write really really interesting stuff, but do it in a way that's not always long. I mean, you think about it. There's a couple of long songs on the album. But circumstances is not long yet. That's that's a good example of like a four minute song where they really packed in a whole lot. And then that's kind of where they started going. And to me, that was like them turning the corner into being this is this is this is go this went from boy, they're really good to oh, my God, was, was right yeah. at that time for me. So hemispheres for sure. Um, Presto for me 
partially because it was the first tour I saw, but also I just really liked um, the writing. I liked I liked the layering that they did with the vocals and the types yep. of keyboards because they were pulling back away from the keyboards a little bit and yep. uh, making them a little more textural. Um, but I, I just, I, I can't get enough of that album in general. Still is, is one of those um, albums that I run to when, I, when I'm working out. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Clockwork Angels is one of them. I, I am so thoroughly amazed that this was the last thing they did. Yeah. yeah. It just, it's an amazing album from top to bottom, like, and challenging in a lot of ways, but just so much fun to listen to. And, um, yeah. and not, and it's not just the newness either. It's just comparing it to everything they did. It's, sure. it's they've got some really quality, quality work there. Um, for my other two, um, I'm going to cheat a little bit, but not really moving pictures because that was the first album that I actually knew was Rush. Like that actually as a, as a kid was like, oh, this is what they sound like. And that's one of those where the, the organization, mm -hmm. uh, the ordering of the album, the songs on the album, there's, you can't do anything to that. You cannot change that album yeah. the, way it's, the way it is. And you can't say that about a lot of albums, right? And, and the fact that we still pretty much play the whole first side of that album at every show, we kind of have to, right? Yeah. It's just... It's, it was an amazing thing. And then, like, just to top it all off, like, you think about the, the first note of that album, right, the beginning of Tom Sawyer, how many bands that have been, that have been playing and been successful are going to start a song with nothing but one keyboard note and some drums? And that's, that's like the opening to this, this song that then is really weird, goes into some weird 7-8 thing with a keyboard, and then just, you know, how that could be a hit. There's no reason that should ever be a hit song. And yet here it is, right? And the whole album is like that. It's full of things like that. Limelight being the best seven, four group other than money that you can ever hear. Right. right yeah. <laughs> but, and again, like who, who would have thought that that's going to be a radio hit? It's a song that's got a seven, eight intro. It's got a three, four section. And then the solo is a halftime three, four that then creaks into this four, four thing. You know, it's like, this should not be a radio hit, right? And yet there it is. Yeah. Well, you don't you don't notice those things. That's what I what I've always liked about them is they can do incredibly complex stuff like that with you know shifting time signatures, shifting meters, and you don't notice. Yeah. It isn't like the sudden like jarring, like, oh now we're gonna go this way. You know, it's not like that. Yeah. It's it's really smooth and you have to kind of sit with it and look at what they're doing before you, you go, oh, wow, okay, oh, all right, what the hell is that? Oh, I didn't even recognize that. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I think, though, in the future, uh, instead of the rule being that you can pick live albums, we should forbid all of our guests from ever picking moving pictures. Because <laughs> that's everybody's favorite album. We know that. And, yeah. Or it's in their top five. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you have another one? Was there another one in there? Okay. Yeah. So the last one would be Power Windows. Power Windows. Nice. Yeah, that was I like that you picked Presto. I like that you picked Power yeah. Windows. Yeah. Those are great albums, man. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. I when you th when you think about these songs and you were saying, oh, it's so odd that Limelight would be a hit, right? It's on classic rock radio it's it's sort of an odd song right and rush had a lot of oddly catchy songs and i attest this to my five-year-old daughter alice who i my my ringtone is subdivisions so when my phone rings it's like in the shopping mall it, my kids start singing it right then we're in the car and she's like dada play subdivisions you know and she's like play it again she get, i'm like no i don't want to play it anymore and i play it and i'm listening to the song i'm like I'm sort of outside the situation. I'm like, what a fucking weird song, right? Yeah. But she's bouncing around to it. And it's got this weird groove and it kind of makes you feel kind of good. And it's got this sort of uplifting vibe to it, that song, right? Uh, and, and I think there's a lot of that running through Rush's music. It just brings you to a whole other place, uh, makes you feel different than you would normally listen to some classic rock friendly radio song. Right? It's just different type of song right uh interesting stuff okay so uh for you guys special uh, pick if you were to pick one rush song that was your favorite of all rush songs you could not live without it it's the one that touches you the most it's the one that embodies your love for the band it's your thing what is it that's an easy one for me it's hemispheres that song has got everything <laughs> Well, being 18 minutes long isn't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> almost, it's you're almost, greedy. What greed? I know it's almost cheating because it's got what six, seven parts. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like La Via Strangiato. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's an instrumental. It's That's cool. Everything. 
that's that's that speaks to you that's that's important yeah cool one tune huh that's that's rough yeah. that's one man yeah it's gonna be yeah. interesting if it's off of the hemisphere zone. um well i could totally <laughs> see both of those picks right those yeah. are those yeah. are good um i'm gonna be a little bit lame and boring but at the same time a song that i really couldn't live without would be tom sawyer i mean as as unique as it is um they do so much that is rush in that song and the things that I like about Rush are in that song. And yeah. it's one of those things where it really, it, it, their, their stuff, you either connect with it or you don't. Like, there are people that don't like Rush, right? And they couldn't really tell you. They just don't like it. And sometimes it's, I don't like his voice, but that's not really it because his voice doesn't sound like that anymore. Um, sometimes it's they just don't like what they do. But then if you do, if you're one of those people that gets it, oh boy, do you get it, right? And I don't, I don't know how to describe that because it's one of those things where you listen to it and it either is, yes, I, I absolutely understand this, or you don't. Right. And, and so for me, I think Tom Sawyer is like, for me, the epitome of, I get this. Like it just sits, it sits with me. In a it's like way. an immediate thing too. Like the first time you hear them, you're either on the boat or <laughs> off the boat. There is no like, oh yeah, I don't know. They're okay. You know, I like a couple of their songs. You never hear that. It's in or out. Yeah. off or on that's it I think, I think a lot of that is true which also is kind of why i mean why the rush fan base is is what it is right yeah the only reason we can do what we do is because there's a lot of people that really really like this stuff yeah you know? and yeah. so it's it's great it's i mean if if we were a cheap trick tribute band i don't know we would have the same following right two guys talking cheap trick no nah, <laughs> sorry uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, w what's the future hold for you guys? Uh, things are picking up in the uh, post, hopefully pre post pandemic world or what? <laughs> so really what's happened is a lot of the stuff that we had scheduled for last year has been, well, rescheduled, rescheduled, but yeah. even now it's still kind of a soft rescheduling because until, until we know everything is going to be opened up. Like for example, we were set to do something in Nashville, but the city of Nashville said, no, we're not going to open up until X dates. So and now we're, we're pushing that back. Um, but there's a lot of that. Uh, like Bill was saying before, we've got a show in Ohio at the end of this month because Ohio has got kind of to 50% capacity. So it's worth it for the place to bring us out. Um, but yeah, starting late summer, going into fall, we've got a lot of a lot of shows lined up currently until they're not, right? Yeah. Cool. And um, where can folks find out more about what you're doing? So... Um, our Facebook, Rush Tribute Project, um, on Facebook, uh, we have Rush, Rush Tribute Project.com, easy for me to say, uh, online. Um, we're, we we're also getting, <laughs> starting to ramp up the uh, Rush Tribute Project YouTube channel. Yeah. Good. Uh, which, which has been neglected by, well, by, by us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, definitely starting to add some things. And we did a live stream, our last live stream we actually uh, did on on YouTube and it was successful yeah. and we realized how many people were following us on YouTube. So, um, so we're going to be putting a lot of, a lot of, uh, future, uh, live streams and video clips and things out there. Nice. Cool. And you know, if you guys ever want to come on the show for a future episode to promote something that you're doing, um, you know, give fans to connect with your fan base, we're one big family here, man. So yeah. it's like an open door. We we we're totally open for that. You just got to give us a heads up, and um, come on, even if it's for you know ten or fifteen minutes, and just to say, hey, we want to put on a message and or relay a message. If you want us to relay a message, or you want to just kind of make an announcement, this show is you know we we share the show in that way. So yeah. uh, we're not uh, no ego no egos here, man. It's all about just kind of the family of Rush, you know. Um, in that way but um you guys are gonna uh play some songs for us are we allowed to make a request or not well you can try <laughs> <laughs> well, really tai, yeah. tai, tai shen i'm just kidding um <laughs> no, it's a, you, you bet your life <laughs> actually you know what can you play the big wheel have you ever played that before that's one we haven't done no oh. i actually like that song see you later i love that song that's a great song man it is um, how about, we mentioned Earthshine. I would really like to hear Earthshine yeah. and possibly the garden. I don't know if you can do it or not, but, um, if not, I wouldn't be offended. And, uh, you know, well, you know, okay. So it's funny you say that. So the garden, if we had our other keyboard set up, then yes, we could do that. Okay. But we don't. No worries. Um, Earthshine, we could in a very panicked mode attempt. <laughs> yeah, we probably would. We could, we could do it. We how about, it. how about 
In, we'll give you an easy one. Something for nothing. At first, no. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> working man. Yeah, yeah, yeah do working man. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Well, we know yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, was there something you guys were were prepared to come on? Yeah, we've got some. We've got some tombs. Um, yeah, okay, totally. Good. We're, oh, we're, that's fine. Whatever we can, we would we'll be happy with whatever you have to offer. Um, also, uh, so we'll we'll let you go set up, but before that, I guess we'll just end the show at your final with your finals. How many songs are you thinking about playing? Oh, we have we have seven available. Okay, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, seven's good. Take mm -hmm. your time set up and should, should actually take long because we're set up. So yeah, I can hit all right, those. sweet, yeah. good. All right. Thank all you guys. Yeah, thank you. This mic. I'll switch this right. Yes. Okay. This is fun, Dan. Yeah, this is, I think, like the most ambitious thing we've done, I would say. Definitely. Yeah. Check one, two, two. We got our fantastic crew back there that you guys can't see John Zurich and Ted Lupella. <laughs> thank hey, you, guys. Hey. Thank you, Ted. You hear us. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys.
was glorious that was awesome guys yeah Woo! it's like our own personal concert dan yeah exactly i hope fans enjoy this as much as we are sounding okay oh beautiful. that's great that was yeah. excellent of course here i ask them and we have your volume turned off so now i can't hear what you All said right. i'm sorry <laughs> All right, it sounded it beautiful. That was that was excellent. Yeah.
voice. Roar of the crowd. Too bad they can't hear us. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> A lot of concentration to play this music, man. Yeah, no shit. Yeah.
Seriously, that was Phew. awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah.
carrying on and hat waving. <laughs> Me too. All right. Oops. Yeah, all right. Make sure I know what I'm doing here. Oh, 
tune yeah they deserve so much more than two people in the audience <laughs> it's true yeah. thank you for indulging us we got a couple more for you yeah cool
Hail Satan. Yeah. Hail Satan. <laughs> Hail Satan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll play Earth Shine or not. This might be their final. Nope. Natural signs. Yep. Nice, they're going they're going out big then. Yep. No meddling.
Was fucking epic. <laughs> it was fucking epic. For Absolutely us, it, fuck, yeah. <laughs> for me, it was epic. <laughs> it was fabulous, man. That was great. Can those guys hear us? I don't right. know. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we could turn the, the microphone back on so we can hear them or the speakers back on so we can hear them. That would be nice. Yep. No problem. Uh, Once again, uh, shout out to Ted Lupala, our sound and light guy. And thank John you. Derek was doing all of our video and making all the streaming things happen for us today. Yeah, you guys have done a fabulous job. And um, what an effort it is uh, just to be able to perform those songs uh, at yeah. that level. Um, you know, even with natural science, um, you know, I think, of, I think of songs like The Camera Eye, you know, these sort of long, complex songs but different than the different than the late 70s stuff you know maybe the hem hemisphere stuff 
Um, but uh, you, you, you guys did a, a really, a really fine job. Dan, were you going to say something before we? I, w I was going to say that I've not seen live music in over a year, and this <laughs> this was such a treat, and I enjoyed this so much. And I know I speak for John too, but we are so grateful that you came on, and so grateful to have you play. It was excellent. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, thank you guys having us. Absolutely. I just want to say thank you to, yeah. to Bill Heck, uh, Sean Jones, and Thomas Slonick uh, of the Rush Tribute Project. If you're in the area, if you hear of them, if you uh, just go onto your computers and check them out, uh, please do. Uh, totally worth it. And they've done Rush a, a favor uh, by carrying on the legacy of this incredible music. And uh, uh, here are two guys talking Rush. We want to thank you very much for joining us on this very special episode. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Us. Peace out, guys. Thank you. Well, Dan, that was a real special treat here on I'll Two say. Guys Talking Rush. Yeah, for real. Yeah. You know what I noticed is on the uh, Clockwork Angels uh, song, uh, his voice seemed, this uh, 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 um, uh, 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 Sean's voice seemed at the register of what Getty's voice he, is now. He was modifying it like ever so slightly. Yeah. For, you know, whatever period, this, like when he, when they did Anthem, it was a lot higher. Yeah. And it's just, you know, they're, they're going for like photo realism in their sound, you know, mm. and they're doing it. So, yeah, I'm very impressed. I, you know, I, I have been following them, uh, um, you know, ongoing, uh, but just to sit here and really kind of focus in on them, I'm, I'm even more impressed by their musicianship and, uh, oh, yeah. and, uh, ability to, uh, create the rush experience as authentically as possible. Yeah. I ditto me too. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> also. Yeah. Well, well, there it is folks. Another incredibly epic Sonic yeah. episode of two guys talking rush my name is john kane i am the delightful dan buckspan and this is two guys talking rush what can i say folks rush, rush. rules Guys are talking, rush two, two, two guys are talking, rush 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 two guys.